Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Genesis, in chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24. Reading verse 1. Now Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. I want you to go to the New Testament, to the book of Galatians. Galatians in chapter 3. Verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Then I want you to go to the end of your Bibles to Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. Reading from verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And finally back to Paul's epistle to the Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. In verse 3, and this will be our key verse, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Father, thank you for your word. We ask you now to give us direction, to give wisdom. Lord, as I begin to preach and to lay out now the principles that you've taught me, Father, may your people learn the way of blessing. May they learn how to walk in that which you purchased for us on Calvary. Father, give me the wisdom and the ability to put it forth in a way that will be understood, in a way that would generate faith and understanding and cause each one to reach out and to take what it is that you have for each one of us. I thank you for it now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What does the word blessing or blessed mean to you? When you hear that word, does it produce in your mind a picture of being poor, beat up, weak, neglected, lonely, sickly? Is those all the pictures that come to your mind? Blessed. Oh, you can just see it, can't you? Can you just see this poor, beaten up old person? Is that what blessed brings to your mind? By the same token, what does the word curse or cursed bring to your mind. What does it mean to you? Does it produce this picture of somebody smiling full of happiness? A picture of prosperity and good health? Is that what the word curse brings to your mind? I don't think so. When was the last time you heard someone pray? And Father, we ask you to curse us today in Jesus' name. No! Blessing means something good. And we all know that God is the source of all blessing. That's why we're always praying and saying, Lord, we ask you to bless us today in Jesus' name. Father, bless 
auntie and uncle so and so and bless mommy and daddy and bless the kids and uh, oh we right from childhood already we've been taught to pray God bless we even say it to people sometimes when we greet them God bless God is the author and the source of all blessing I've never yet had somebody greet another person and say, well, God curse you. God is not the author of cursing. But that's something we're going to cover in another study in this series. I want to look tonight at the way of blessing. The way of blessing that God has ordained for each one of us, His children. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, Paul said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. That one little verse is packed with so much power that I'm going to be preaching on it for quite a good few weeks. Let's look at what Paul is saying here. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is blessed. You know that? That's why He can bless. Hey, if I'm going to bless somebody by giving them out of my abundance, I'd better have been blessed in the first place because if I don't got no blessing, I can't give it to anybody, can I? You want to find the most blessed person in the universe? His name's God. You want to find any kind of blessing that is available? You're going to find it there. He's got them all. Every single one of them. You're not going to find them anywhere else. You're not going to find them anywhere else. You're certainly not going to find them in the devil's camp. Hey, the devil's not blessed. That's where the curse comes from. God is the fount of all blessing and Paul says the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has blessed us he doesn't say is blessing us he doesn't say is going to bless us he doesn't say might bless us if he feels like it he doesn't say we'll bless you if you're good enough He says he has blessed us. And if you look into the Greek there, you see something very interesting. The Greek tense that is used there for has blessed. That Greek tense is a tense known as the aorist tense. In our English language we have a present and a past and a future. But the Greek aorist tense was a very special kind of past tense. It was a past tense which indicates something which took place in the past and happened and doesn't need to be repeated. It happened and completed itself. So when Paul says here, God blessed us, he's saying God gave us the blessing, it's done, it's over, and it is not to be repeated. It doesn't need to be repeated because it is complete. And we're going to be speaking a lot more about that. We have been blessed. So why do we pray and say, Lord bless us today? Why do we say, Lord bless this person who is suffering in sickness and bless them with healing? Why do we pray and say, Father, this person is battling financially. Please bless them and prosper them. Why do we keep asking God to bless? When according to this verse, God has blessed once and for all in the past. Well, I'm going to be answering that question over a period of time. You'll understand exactly what Paul was referring to. Paul tells us that God has blessed us in four ways different ways first he says 
with all blessings. He has blessed us with all blessings. Now, when the word tells us that God has blessed us with all blessings, I want you to realize that there is no blessing that God doesn't have. There is no blessings that God might have some of them, and maybe some of them are somewhere else. So we can at least get all of God's blessings, but uh, hey, He doesn't cover all of them, so we're going to have to go somewhere else to get some of the other blessings. No. No. God's got them all. You don't, you don't have to go anywhere else. If He don't got it, it ain't to be had. All blessings. Well, can you think of some blessings? Can you think of some blessings? Sickness. Now God's not sick. Poverty. God's not poor. Hey, those aren't blessings, are they? Just let your mind go. And think of blessing. Think of a person that you would call blessed. The world calls them successful. Is success a blessing? Is it? Is it a curse? Think about it. Every blessing that you can possibly think about is contained in God and has been given to each one of us. Past tense. Completed. And then Paul says, with every spiritual blessing, spiritual blessing, Well, what does that mean? Does that mean that we're only allowed to get blessed spiritually? And, well, things are not spiritual, so we can't expect God to bless us with things. We must remain poor. And healing is a physical thing. It's not spiritual. So we can't expect God to give us healing. Because that's not spiritual. I will speak about it more just now. Thirdly, He has blessed us with the blessings that are in the heavenly realm. I've heard a lot of people have seen visions of angels. I see angels quite often in the spirit. And I've never seen one that was sick yet. They're normally pretty well dressed, so I don't think they're poor. Can you imagine there being a curse in the heavenly realm where God lives? Well, every description I've ever heard about heaven indicates they've got so much gold to go around, they just pave the streets with it. Every blessing that comes from the realm of God has been given to you as a believer. And finally, the fourth way that God has blessed us is in Christ. In Christ. It's not available to you outside of Christ. If you are not a born again child of the living God, what I'm speaking about does not apply to you. Because the blessings have been given to us in Christ and in Him alone. And outside of Christ, we don't have access to God or to His realm or to His blessings. Let's look at each one of these a little bit tonight and see if we can understand a little bit about what God has in mind for us. And then later on we'll begin to look and how we can go about appropriating and receiving what God has for us. All blessings. Let's look at some of the things that we could consider blessings in our lives. And let's start with our needs. Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall provide all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Can you see a few more things there? He shall provide my needs according to his riches in glory, the heavenly realm. How? Through Christ Jesus in Christ. 
You see the same pattern? It's there. They're always together. They're always together. You'll see it again and again. Well, what's some of your needs? How about basic living expenses? How about food and clothing and transport and electricity and a house with a roof over your head? Basic needs, something that each one of us needs to survive in this world. Does God want us to have these? Of course he does. How about health? How can I survive with ill health? If my body is sick, how can I go out and work? How can I live a normal life? And how about wisdom for living? The ability to know how to go about my life. The ability to go out and to be employed gainfully and to bring in an income. The ability to deal with problems that come my way. The ability to handle every situation that I face in life. Wisdom. Are these not basic needs? Are these not blessings? Well, if they are blessings, then according to the word of God, God has provided those blessings for us. God wants us to have our needs met. He wants us to live comfortably. He wants us to have good clothes to wear. He wants us to have a good house to live in. He wants us to have good transport to travel in. He wants us to eat good healthy food. There are needs. And I don't think many people have a problem believing that God wants to provide our needs. But you see, brother, God provides our needs and not our greeds. Chapter and verse, please. That sounds very spiritual, but it's not in the Bible. God provides also another blessing. Our desires. Call that a blessing? Well, what are some of your desires? Things. What? Things. Yes, things. Nice things. Pretty things. Useful things. Things that I enjoy. Things that make life more comfortable. But you don't need them. So what? You know how often I've bought my children something that they didn't need? You know why? Because when they unwrap that gift and that smile comes on their face and that bubbling joy pours out of them and they get so full of excitement. Oh man, it does something to me. It just does something to me to see how blessed they are by my gift. Of course, things are a blessing. Who do you think created the things? The devil? When God made the earth and He made everything in this world, the scripture says He looked down upon it and He said it was good. When God called out his chosen people of Israel, do you know what his main promise to them was? I'm taking you to a land that flows with milk and honey. What do you want to drink milk for? What's wrong with water? What do you want honey for? It's a luxury. You can live without it. You don't need it. Uh, I guess God missed that one. Because he gave them a land that flowed with milk and honey. And the scripture says he brought honey out of the rock for them. Hey, he went to so much trouble to get them the honey. He made it come out of the stone. God wants 
to give us every good thing that he has created. He wants to withhold nothing from us. And I'll tell you what, in Christ Jesus, he has provided for us to have whatsoever our heart desires. And the scripture says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. How about recognition and acceptance? How about being lifted up and recognized and revered by others? How about positions of authority and fame? Oh, that's very unspiritual, brother. We have to be humble. We've got to be low. Nobody must see me. Oh yeah? The Lord told the nation of Israel that they, if they would obey his commands, he would make them the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. God wants us to be lifted up. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. How are the world going to see us and what God has put in us? And how are we going to display forth the blessing of the Lord except we are in a place of recognition? I remember once at a time when I was stuck out there in the background as a nobody and nobody ever seemed to know that I existed and yet I had so much in me that I wanted to give forth for the Lord. And I looked at a man who was a medical doctor that God had raised up to preach the word and he'd become famous and he was traveling around the country. And I envied him. And yet I looked at what he had and I said, Lord, you've given me more than what this man has. And then I looked at a well-known preacher who was so full of himself and so arrogant and so keen on drawing attention to himself. And I felt not really glorifying the Lord. And I said, Lord, it's not fair. It's not fair. This man is being blessed and I'm not. And the Lord said to me, he's accomplishing more for my kingdom than you are right now. So I would be quiet if I were you. I began to realize that to be lifted up and recognized is not necessarily a bad thing because it can put us in a position where God is glorified in us. And if I'm walking around as a believer, groveling around, wallowing, poor and beat up and beat down and sick, how many people are going to come up to me in the street and say, Man, I wonder what you've got. How did you get it? Would you? Huh? Oh, but they're going to the world, let me tell you. And they're buying all the success books, all the do-it-yourself books in the world that says, How to become a millionaire. Ten easy steps. This is how I did it. These are my secrets to success. You buy some of the books written by certain well-known millionaires and their secrets to success is destroy the opposition. Lift up yourself. The Bible calls that strife and vain glory. It is time that the people of God rise up into positions in the world that are recognized, into positions of authority, into positions of success, into positions of wealth, that they can declare to the world, I am what I am because of what God did in me. And the world can say, I want some of that. Tell me how you got it. Oh, but we're too spiritual to do that, aren't we? Oh no, we've got to be humble. We mustn't be taken up with things. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. 
We'll leave all the wealth for the devil and his crowd. I can imagine me giving my son a beautiful gift that he's been wanting for so long and him looking at it and saying, well, I'll just give that away to somebody else. Not a chance. Not a chance. Listen, I want to tell you something. When God made the world, he didn't make it for the devil. He made it for his man, Adam. And what he created in this world, he created for his man, Adam, and for his descendants. He made it for us. And I want to tell you something. Adam gave it away when he handed over to Satan in sin. And Satan took control of this world when Jesus came upon this earth to buy it back for us. That's right, to buy it back for us. He paid the supreme penalty. He paid the supreme price of shedding his own blood to buy back for us what Satan had given, had, 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 had taken over from Adam and what Adam had given away. Jesus came to buy it back and the devil tried to stop him by tempting him and saying, yeah, there's all the kingdoms of the world. I've got control over them. I will give them all to you if you will bow down and worship me. And Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Jesus went to the cross and he reversed what Adam had lost. And he took back from Satan what Adam had handed over to him. And it cost him his life. Can you imagine taking all the money you have to buy your wife a beautiful gift to give to her and she won't take it? He paid everything. And the scripture says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not with him freely give us all things? All what? Things? Oh, folks, we're missing it. We're missing it. We're losing it. But Jesus paid such a big price to purchase for us. Spiritual blessings. Spiritual blessings. Well, our blessings must only be spiritual. You know, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is in confusing the Old Testament with the New Testament, the Old Covenant with the New. And the common misconception we have is that while in the Old Covenant, God's blessings were all temporal. And so God's blessings and His covenant with Israel were the promised land flowing with milk and honey, all the things, all the, the temporal things, the blessings, the land that He was giving them. And now Joshua went in and he conquered the land. And we come to the New Testament, we've got to spiritualize it, brother. And so, the crossing of the Jordan was the crossing into the promised land, which is heaven. And the crossing of the Jordan is death, by which we leave this life and cross into the promised land. And one day we will walk the streets of gold. And one day we'll have that wonderful mansion. You know that old song? I have a mansion just over the hilltop. What do you want a mansion over there for? I need one now. What do you want to walk the streets of gold then? I need gold now. But you see, we've got to have the spiritual blessing now, and we get to heaven one day, and we're in the presence of the Lord, then we're going to have the physical blessings. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Now, Paul meant something completely different here when he was speaking about spiritual blessings. He was giving us a clear indication that God lives in a spiritual realm. The scripture says God is a spirit. 
And if God is going to bless us, He has to bless us from the spiritual realm. He has to bless us through His Spirit. What do you think created the world in the first place? The Bible says, and you can read it in Genesis, how that the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over that earth. It was the Spirit of God that moved in to bring about a creation as God spoke forth His word and said, Let there be! And as He did that, the Spirit moved in and created. Spirit always dominates the physical. The spiritual is always superior to the physical. You take a mass of material, you cannot convert it into spirit. But if you take spiritual essence, you can make it into anything you like. God, by His Spirit, created the worlds out of nothing. Because spirit has that capability. If you take spiritual essence, you can use it to make something tangible and physical. And so when Paul says that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, what he was saying is God has given you the spiritual substance, all that you'll ever need to create every kind of blessing you might possibly need in this life. Can you see that? Spiritual blessings. And how did you get it? What happened when you were born again? What happened when you received Jesus into your life? as your personal Lord and Savior, I tell you what happened. What happened is that the Spirit of God came upon you and came into you and moved in and took up residence within you and became united as one with your Spirit. And your Spirit and God's Spirit are one in fellowship and in unity. And God poured into you His permanent indwelling, abiding presence by His Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit came in there, He brought all of heaven with Him. He brought all the blessings with Him. He brought all the spiritual essence with Him that would ever be needed to create anything that you might ever need in this life. That's why the blessings have to be spiritual. Otherwise they would be limited. But because they're spiritual, they are unlimited. And that's why it can be every blessing, not just most of the blessings. Paul says God blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. The heavenly realm. So where is the heavenly realm? Well, we all know that God lives up there in heaven on one of the planets, right? I mean, that's where Jesus went to when he went up. Up, 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 and then he disappeared and then he took off to another star or somewhere. I don't know. God's got to be out there somewhere. You stand up on a, on a clear night and look up at the stars and you begin to wonder, I wonder which way heaven is. Have you ever thought that? Have you ever looked up there and said, I wonder where God is? Where is the heavenly realm? Well, the scriptures speak actually about three realms. Three different realms. In Philippians 2 verse 9 it says, Therefore, God has highly exalted him 
and given him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth things in heaven one realm God's realm things in earth that's the physical realm that we live in things under the earth that refers to the underworld or the realm of darkness Satan's realm three different realms God's realm is normally referred to in the scriptures as the realm of glory and so Paul tells us in Philippians 4 verse 19 my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory where's God's riches in glory where's glory the heavenly realm what's the heavenly realm it's the place where God is can run in circles aren't we well how far do you need to go to get to the heavenly realm since God is so far away and we got to pray these blessings down we got to get in the spirit and we got to have long times of prayer and fasting and we got to beam our prayers up there like rockets and hope that our rockets are strong enough to get there to reach the heavenly realm and then God sends it here at the speed of light and you know that the nearest star is probably several hundred light years away <laughs> oh it gets ridiculous doesn't it no wonder so few people expect God to answer their prayers no wonder so few of them get God to answer their prayers listen God is closer than breathing you want to find God do you want to reach him you just need to look in here because he's inside of you you just need to look over there because he's inside of everybody else who knows him you just need to look anywhere because God is everywhere so where is the heavenly realm? The heavenly realm is right here. What did Jesus preach as he came down? As he went out to begin his ministry. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Where? Where? Just looky right here. Here it is. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Listen, the scriptures say concerning Jesus, shall I say Jesus himself said this in John chapter 1 and verse 18, speaking about himself, he said, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father has declared it who is in the bosom of the Father hang on hang on where was Jesus while well, he was down here on the earth was he not he spoke those words he said the only begotten son who is in the bosom of the Father Jesus was down on the earth and at the same time he was in the bosom of the Father how could that be? <laughs> okay, let me show you another one. The scripture says in Ephesians 2, verses 4 to 6, that God who is rich in mercy for his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has made us alive together with Christ and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places.
places in Christ Jesus. You are seated in heavenly places right now if you are a child of God in Christ. You are seated on the throne of heaven. Looking down. If it's up there. Do you feel like it? Have I got you confused yet? Have I got your mind ticking yet? You see, God has made man to have three parts to his being. A spirit and a soul and a body. Now we'll be looking at that in a lot of detail in the weeks that lie ahead. But you see, as man, you have a part of you that came from God and has the same nature of God and it is your spirit. And a spirit has access to the realm of the spirit. Your spirit has contact with heaven. And your spirit is living in a physical body which has contact with the earth. That's what Jesus was talking about when he said the Son of God who is in the bosom of the Father Jesus was physically upon the earth, but his spirit was in union with Father God at the same time. What you don't realize is that you are already walking in the heavenly realm. From the moment that you were born again and accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you gained an entrance into the realm of God. And that means that your spirit is in touch with the place that the blessings come from. Your spirit is in touch with the Holy Spirit. Your spirit is in touch with the heavenly realm of God 24 hours a day. And the Holy Spirit and God are communing and communicating with your spirit 24 hours a day. You say, well, I wish I could hear from the Lord. He's talking. Listen. He's talking all the time. You're just too deaf to hear him. Oh. It's getting into heavy stuff, you know, isn't it? Way out. We're still in the Word. What I'm saying is totally scriptural. Paul says that we are blessed in Christ. In Christ. When God made man, he gave the blessing. He created this earth. And he put his man, Adam, upon this earth and said, Adam, I will keep control of the universe and of the solar system. And of everything that's involved. But what takes place in and upon the earth is your responsibility. I'm giving it to you. You're in charge. That is why Adam had the authority to hand that control over to Satan when he sinned. Jesus came as the last Adam. Jesus was born of a virgin, which means that he was born without the taint of sin, and he came upon the earth in the same condition that Adam did. And we'll look at this also in a lot of detail. Jesus came as the seed of Abraham, with whom God had entered into covenant and given all the blessings. We saw it there. God had blessed Abraham in everything. And Jesus entered into blood covenant with Almighty God. And he shed his own blood in the covenant. And Jesus entered into a permanent covenant as man with God. And man and God became one in Christ. 
The scripture says that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Jesus brought back what Adam had lost. Jesus restored the relationship between man and God which was lost in the Garden of Eden when man fell. Jesus brought us back to that place of blessing. To the place of being in covenant with somebody who has everything. And when you're in covenant with something, everything they have belongs to you. Jesus entered into covenant with Almighty God. And as we come into him, as we become part of him, the scripture says that we as believers are members of the body of Christ. Now I don't care how humble a part of the body you are. I don't care if you're the smallest cell on the bottom of the sole of the foot of the body of Christ. You are still part of the body and you are still in Christ. And if you are in Christ, you are in covenant in Him with Almighty God and everything that God has. You have a right to have also. And we've already seen that he's got all the blessings. So we have a right in Christ to those blessings. Now what's to be our response to all of this? When we realize all that he's given us. Oh, it makes me want to just go out and live like the devil. It really does. Is that what it does to you? No. No. When I realize all that he's done for me, when I realize all that he's given me, when I realize all that is available to me in him, when I realize how much he has blessed me, you know what I want to do? I want to bless him back. I want to bless him back. I want to give him everything that I have. How are you going to bless him? By saying, well, God doesn't want you to be blessed. He provides your needs and not your greeds. That really blesses the Lord, doesn't it? No, how can that bless the Lord? How can that bless him? Oh, I tell you what blesses me when I give a gift to somebody is the look of gratitude and the joy and the excitement on their face. When they come and throw their arms around me and hug me and say, Man, I appreciate that. Thank you. That's all the Lord requires of us. I think no person could be more insulted than if they gave somebody a costly gift to have the person pull out their wallet and say, How much do I owe you? People are trying to do that. They're trying to earn God's blessings. They're trying to work for His blessings. They're trying to say, well, I'm unworthy of His blessings. They're trying to say, well, maybe it's not God's will for me to be blessed at this time. Maybe it's not God's will for me to be healed. Maybe God wants me to remain sick to teach me something. Oh, I do that to my son all the time. I hurt him like mad to teach him something. When he falls and hurts himself and comes crying to me with blood running down from his knee, I say, yeah, I want you to stay like that and suffer for a while so that you can learn not to do that in future. I'm not even that bad a parent. But we want to say that God is that kind of parent. Listen, God is the source of all blessing. And James in his epistle tells us every good and every perfect gift comes down from the father of lights in whom there is no variation nor shadow of turning every good and every perfect gift Listen, a curse is not a good gift. A curse is not a perfect gift. And sickness and disease and poverty and suffering and humiliation and loneliness and despair and depression and discouragement are not gifts from Almighty God. They're a curse. And He has redeemed us from the curse. 
that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. Well, what kind of blessing did Abraham had? God had blessed Abraham in all things. God wants us to be blessed. That is why he gave us in Christ Jesus, by his Holy Spirit, every blessing that we will ever need. And all we need to do is to reach out in faith and in gratitude to him and take those gifts of his love. But most people don't know how. And that is what the series is going to be about. By the grace of God, I'm going to show you from the word of God how to reach out by the hand of faith and in love, and in hope, to receive those wonderful blessings that Jesus bought for us in Calvary, and that God offers to us freely in Christ Jesus. Amen.